Hey there, welcome to the video guys. My name is Pushpinder Gill and in this video we're going to be talking about the domain and the range of trigonometric functions. Right? So we're going to be talking about the domain and the range of trigonometric functions. So let's get started. So I'll actually I'd like to start uh, with the sine x and cos x. So uh, as you clearly see, if you've seen the previous video, you know everything about this diagram in which this was any number a comma b, and we had uh, sine x, that is the the sine x to be equal to b, and we had the value of cos x to be equal to a, right? And uh, now from there we actually generalize with something we we found that that the value of sine x. Uh, it's a maximum possible one and it's a greatest possible uh, sorry minimum possible is negative one similarly for cosine x uh, the maximum possible is again one and the minimum possible value it's still negative one now we will actually try to find the domain and range of these functions right so uh, so let's start with the value of with the function sine x Right, so we're going to start with the function sine x. So for sine of x, uh, if I let's say that sine of x is equal to y, then uh, the range of sine of x would actually mean uh, the value of y. You know what what all different values y can take. So the range would actually be what all different values y can take. As you can clearly see here, that they can take a total value of from negative one all the way till one. Now these parentheses, these brackets kind of thing, uh, they include negative 1 and 1, right? So, uh, so the range of this sine function is between, it's between negative 1 and 1 and also include negative 1 and 1. And what is the domain of the function? Domain of the function would mean what all different values x can take, right? So uh, what all different values these x can take? So x can actually take any real number because this is a radian. So x can actually take uh, any real number here. Now let's uh, try to find the same thing for uh, the, the function of cosine. That is, let's suppose cosine of x is equal to y. So in that case, the range of this function, it's again going to be uh, from negative 1 all the way till 1. And again, the domain of the function, which it's what all values this x can take, uh, that would be any real number. Right, so you know that is the domain and range for sine x and cosine x. Now let's go ahead and find uh, the domain and range for other functions. Let's say that uh, we want to find it for the value of tangent of x. Now from here, if we try to find the the range of uh, range and domain, so we want to find the range and the domain for the tangent of x. Now you know that range is something the value y can take and domain is something that the value x can take. Right. So the domain for the function that is the value of x can take, uh, the value that x can take, uh, it's, it's going to be any real number. However, uh, x cannot be a multiple of 90 degrees. So in the previous video in which we uh, found out the different values of tangent of x from there, we actually found that the value of tan 90, uh, it's actually equal to undefined. Similarly, uh, all the multiples of 90 degrees or uh, all the multiples instead of 90, I can also write again uh, pi by 2. Uh, all the multiples of pi by 2, uh, the tangent of it is going to give us undefined. So x can be any real number. However, x cannot be a multiple uh, of 90 degrees or a multiple of pi by 2. So, you know, we can basically call it x cannot be equal to 2n plus 1 into pi by 2 because tan pi by 2, uh, tan pi by 2 is undefined, tan 3 pi by 2 is undefined, tan 5 pi by 2 is undefined and so on. So x cannot be uh, a kind of an odd multiple of uh, pi by 2. So, you know, all these values are restricted or they are not in the domain of x. And what about the range? Since you know that uh, in, in tan 90 is undefined and tan 0 is 0, so x will actually, uh, y will actually belong to any real number. So it can take any real number, uh, you know, because the range of tan of this function over here, it's uh, it's any real number, right? Because it goes till 
infinity right so these uh, these are the functions these are the various ranges and domains of sin cos and tan now let's go ahead and find out the ranges and the domains of uh, the inverse uh, trigonometric functions as well so we'll start with the value of cosecant x so we'll start with cosecant x let's suppose cosecant of x is equal to y so in that case range uh, again we'll say range is something that is denoted by y and domain is something which is donated by x here, right? So the uh, since what is cosecant of x? Cosecant of x is actually equal to one by sine of x. Now x can actually take any value here. Uh, x can actually take any value. However, it will not be able to take any value which is a multiple of pi because sine pi sine 2 pi sine 3 pi is going to come out to be 0 and 1 upon 0 will actually become infinite. So x can actually take any value but x will not be able to take any value which is a multiple of pi and you know this n is something that is an integer you know, I'm just denoted by z here right so n is an integer. Now what about the range now since we know that uh, sine x is something which is all the way from 1 till negative 1 and 1 upon any in uh, any fraction is always going to come down as something which is not a fraction which means the range of cosecant x that means this value of y will actually be a number which is either greater than 1 or a number which is less than negative 1 right so this would be uh, this would be the range of cosecant x why is that because sine x is going to take all the values between 1 and negative 1 including 1 and negative 1 like 0 0.5 and 1 upon 1 over 0 0.5 is nothing but 2 so 1 over 1 over any fraction is going to give you a number which is greater than 1 or a number which is less than negative 1 depending upon the sign of that number right so these this is the domain and the range of cosecant x right now let's go ahead and find out what is the domain and the range of secant x that is 1 over cos x so let's suppose if i say that uh, y is actually equal to secant of x which is equal to 1 over cosine of x right now again range is something that will be denoted by y and the domain is something which would be denoted by x now x can actually take uh, any value here also x can take any real number uh, however uh, it will not be able to take a value which is a multiple of 90 degrees because cos 90 uh, is actually equal to 0 and uh, from there cos 270 is also 0 so we don't want a 0 here which means x cannot take a value which is an odd multiple of pi by 2 you know something that it's coming a lot now we don't need to explain that and n is something which is an integer right so this is the domain of x and what about the range of uh, range of this this function over here which is denoted by y what all different values that y can take it's again using the same method because the range of cosine is uh, kind of the same of range of the sine function again that means y can actually either be greater than 1 or it will be either less than negative 1 so this is about the uh, range and domain of secant x. Now we are left with one other function that is cotangent of x. So if I say let y is equal to cotangent of x which is equal to 1 over tangent of x. Now again range would be value that y can take and domain would be the value that x can take. Now in this case uh, the x can actually take any real number However, we do not want this to be 0 and tan 0, tan 180, tan 360 is 0 which means x cannot be a multiple of pi where n is an integer, right? And in range function over here, uh, again, uh, since x tangent of x can take any value in the whole world, similarly, uh, this uh, the, the range for this can actually take any value in the whole world. It's not saying any value in the whole world. They can take up any real number, uh, any real value there. Right? So that is the range. Uh, so the range of this set is all real numbers. So these are the uh, domains and the ranges of all 
uh, the functions over here. So, you know, we started with sin x, cos x, tangent x, and then cos cosecant x, secant x, and cotangent x. So, this would be about the domain and the ranges of these functions over here, guys. So this is the website address that is perfect-scores.com. You can explore more about us on this website. Don't forget to give us your valuable like on facebook.com slash perfect scores. And this would be the email address to send us your valuable feedback. Right. So in the next video, we're going to be talking about what all, what is the range of these functions in particular, in their particular quadrant. Right. So this would be about the video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. And